Hi, it's me, Dr. Mohammad Kazafi, and uh, you are watching Dr. Mohammad Kazafi Views. And uh, I am uh, right now. I am planning to present one more important topic, which is called the thoracic disc herniation. And this is the 59-year-old female with the history of the subarachnoid hemorrhage and the middle cerebral artery aneurysm, clipping 30 years prior presents with three months of the severe and the mid low back pain radiating under the left chest wall below the ribs and she report tingling on her left leg and progressive unsteadiness while ambulating her left leg feel as tough it gives out on her uh, she denies and a bowel bladder incontinence her symptom remains refractory to anti-inflammatory medication and 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 uh, chiropractic therapy exam reveals normal strength throughout but the wake sensory changes to pinprick on the left flank and she has three plus reflexes in bilateral lower extremities a positive left bibinisky clonus and hoffman's negative this is the history of this patient and uh, i just want to uh, uh, the, uh, the, definitely my differential diagnosis uh, prior to differential diagnosis uh, uh, as my topic this is a provisional diagnosis definitely there is a thoracic disc herniation and uh, uh, my differential diagnosis the first is a thoracic disc herniation then compression breast fracture uh, sorry compression burst fracture and spondylotic myelopathy uh, and the non, if I go for the neoplastic thing, then metastasis and the extradural tumor, aneurysmal bone cyst, or the plasma uh, plasma cytoma, uh, definitely. And the intradural extra uh, extramedullary tumor, such as the meningioma or neurofibroma, intramedullary tumor, ependymoma, um, uh, ep ep ependymoma, or uh, we can say that. Uh, 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 neurofibroma. So here, uh, an uh, intramedullary tumor, an uh, ependymoma, and again astrocytoma. And in intradural extramedullary tumor, meningioma, and neurofibroma. So the vascular, if involvement, I consider then definitely AVM and uh, 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 an infectious, if I consider then diabetes mellitus, IV drug use or immune deficiency and here and the discitis plus minus osteomyelitis, epidural abscess and the multiple sclerosis, transverse myelitis. So these all are the uh, possible, compli uh, possible differential diagnosis here for this kind of uh, patient. Regarding the presentation I want to show you here, if you can appreciate here, this is the uh, very clearly shown there is a the disc and uh, which, which you can see and you can appreciate where I am marking uh, with the plus sign and uh, here you can see this is the disc in the axial view, this is uh, a suggestive for the disc herniation. So image for the regarding the image in, in, in uh, sagittal and the axial CT myelogram of the thoraco lumbar uh, spine demonstrate a focal disc herniation at T10 and T11 and enteric to the left with loss of CSF signal and uh, anterior laterally and the further workup such as the laboratory workup such as the CBC, BMP, PTINR, APTT and the uh, CT reveals and a calcification, osteophytes, MRI cannot be performed due to the unknown material of the aneurysmal club. Um, other tests such as the EMG and the nerve conduction study exclude other diagnoses if vague then equivocal sign and symptoms. Consultants such as the internal medicine, pre-operative evaluation and particularly pulmonary status and the transthoracic approach consideration here. So the pathophysiology, a vast majority of the uh, thoracic 
disc herniation result from the degenerative process and articulation of the ribs with the uh, sternum anteriorly and the vertebral body and the transverse process posteriorly stabilizes the upper thoracic spine. So the most uh, herniation occur below T7 and the last level of the individual fused rib. The prevalence of asymptomatic uh, thoracic disc herniation range from 10% to 37% symptomatic. So the so the Mm, the, uh, the thoracic disc herniation is rare and account for approximately 0.5% of all asymptomatic disc herniation and the ratio of canal uh, and the ratio of canal uh, to cord diameter is lowest in the thoracic spine so increasing the potential for the mass lesion to become symptomatic and uh, 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 and uh, dent dentate ligament and the natural kypho uh, kyphosis rather the spinal cord anteriorly rendering it more uh, susceptible to the compression from disc herniation uh, the, the each rib articulate with the superior posterior part of the same level vertebra and with an uh, inferior part of the above vertebra so except a t1 T11 and T12 where it meets uh, only uh, you can say and, uh, we, we, uh, only you can say uh, um, uh, and, uh, this is uh, uh, means separately. I want to show you here uh, something so you can appreciate somehow. You can appreciate here there is a you can appreciate the superior uh, and a coastal articular facet uh, which uh, and uh, and uh, for the head of the rib and then the, the and this is the surgical side I just uh, there and uh, with the circle you can appreciate and the superior costo transverse ligament you can appreciate be behind and then the lateral costo transverse ligament uh, you can appreciate too and then uh, intra tra inter transverse ligament you can appreciate this but you 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 can see here the radiate ligament this radiate ligament is very important and this is the surgical site for us and then, then this uh, inferior uh, coastal articular facet um, and where for the head of the rib so here you can means uh, you, here you can go for the surgery According to access to disc space, often require the resection of the uh, of a rib head here, where as I showed you just just a few few seconds before, and a treatment options we have such as the medical and uh, like the back pain, NSAIDs, and the corticosteroids, muscle relaxant like the radicular or neuropathic pain, gabapentin, pregabalin, and the antidepressant. In the mechanical point of view, you can say the physiotherapy, definitely activity modification, muscle strength, optimizing posture and the mechanism to limit axial loading on the disc space and the, electro, uh, and the uh, and electrical stimulation unit and the chiropractic manipulation is contraindicated. Interventional, if you consider that the thoracic epidural steroid injection may be helpful or useful in a subset of the neurologically normal patient with radicular pain refractory to the medication. Surgically, trans, trans uh, and a pedicular approach is a, a very popular approach with plus minus laminectomy for the thoracic um, and, uh, thoracic. Uh, uh, sorry, disc herniation, trans approach is very, very popular and I'm used to doing with that because the less extensive posterior approach uh, and allows access to the lateral canal and disc space and limited uh, access medially and unilateral approach typically do not require instrumentation and optimal for the soft and, and uh, 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 means uh, and, uh, paracentral uh, and, um, thoracic disc herniation and it is not advisable to remove most uh, 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 thoracic disc herniation via laminectomy alone. So the other option, other surgical option is the costo transversectomy 
um, a posterior lateral approach involving more extensive soft tissue dissection and resection of the proximal rib for uh, a better visualization and the medial axis and the increased post-operative pain and risk of the pneumothorax, pneumothorax because of this so you, uh, and, uh, and use for the central and the paracentral soft and the calcified uh, and, uh, thoracic disc herniation. Uh, lateral extra cavitary an approach which is the most aggressive posterior lateral approach simultaneously allows ventral access to the anterior and the posterior column and technically difficult operation with the higher morbidity and use for the large central disc and the osteophyte complex for the for the multi level for the multi level uh, uh, thoracic disc herniation with the osteophytic uh, osteophytic disease and the transthoracic anterior approach direct access to the ventral spine and require single lung ventilation and the highest morbidity especially in a smoker and elderly uh, and a contraindicated in patient with the severe respiratory disease and and three distinct of these three distinct approaches um, uh, give us the chance uh, and, uh, that we can operate all kind of the, uh, thoracic disc herniation and uh, the standard thoracotomy, endoscopic thoracotomy, th thoracoscopy and the minimal invasive surgery direct lateral use for the intradural herniation uh, uh, or or the large central disc or the osteophyte complex. So these are further options and I, 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 I want to show you here if you uh, just a second. If you can see here you can uh, you can appreciate there is a schematic demonstrating the trajectory and the access for the transpedicular uh, and uh, costo, uh, costo transfer sectomy and the lateral and uh, an extra cavitary and the transthoracic approach. So these are the different approaches from where we are going. And uh, uh, so in the in, in almost almost uh, an, uh, uh, roughly 180 degrees in your approach, and you can go and, uh, uh, from posterior to behind at least 180 degrees, and uh, which is very I think uh, helpful to treat such kind of uh, uh, disc disease, especially in the thoracic region, where definitely uh, we have to take care for the spinal cord, like we have to take care of the spinal cord in the cervical spine. I want to present in front of you transpedicular approach. Prone position is used with the neuromonitoring and fluoroscopy for localization. Locate the lumbosacral junction and count rostrally. Utilize live fluoroscopy and ensure that the image correlate with the pre-operative films. So the rib may be used as an adjunct marker and the and a subperiosteal dissection is performed unilaterally to expose the superior and inferior facet of the index level and the exposure is performed bilaterally if performing a complete laminectomy for bilateral transpedicular approach. The inferior articular process and the inferior lamina of the rostral vertebra are removed with the high speed drill and for pedicle to pedicle exposure and the superior half of the inferior pedicle is, drill, is drilled approximately one centimeter beyond the posterior longitudinal ligament into the dorsal aspect of the quadral vertebra then medially ventral to the dura and then rostral through the disc space and into the upper vertebral and, uh, and plate and creating a void ventral to the disc pathology uh, and the low profile instrument such as the a blunt nerve probe is used to careful dissection uh, the dura from the underlying posterior longitudinal ligament osteophyte and, uh, and the thoracic disc herniation uh, a down biting curate is uh, carefully inserted into this uh, uh, plane uh, atop the pathology and the direct ventrally and laterally to pursue the disc material into cavitary uh, away from the cord and the disc material is removed with an angle ronger forcep if ligamentous hypertrophy or osteophyte are contributory factor so then the posterior uh, for posterior decompression can be performed after addressing the ventral pathology to avoid the dorsal herniation and kinking of the cord ventrally 
So the neurophysiological monitoring remains essential throughout of the procedure and if the index level is at the thoracolumbar junction or multiple sequ and a sequential level are involved or bilateral pe and a pedicula and a pediculectomy is required then the internal fixation may be necessary. Because the, when you are doing bilateral pediculectomy, then definitely it's very, very much understood. We have to go for the internal fixation and it is very much necessary. But if the ligamentous hypertrophy or the osteophyte are contributory factor, then the posterior decompression can be performed under uh, 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 after addressing the ventral pathology to avoid the dorsal herniation and kinking of the cord ventrally. Because of the neurophysiological monitoring remains essential, and uh, throughout the procedure so the uh, so the this uh, low profile instrument such as the blunt nerve probe is used to careful dissect the dura from the underlying posterior longitudinal ligament osteophyte uh, and the thoracic disc herniation and the down biting curate is carefully inserted into the plane atop to the pathology and directed ventrally and laterally to uh, and, uh, to and, uh, pursue the disc material into the cavity away from the cord and the disc material is removed with the angle ronger forcep. So these all are the tricks and the understanding is very very important and, uh, and very very necessary for us. Um, uh, here I want to tell you one thing, uh, maybe a little repetition, but I beg your pardon for that, that the inferior articular process and the inferior lamina of the rostral vertebra are removed with the high speed drill for pedicle to pedicle exposure. So the posterior half of the inferior pedicle is drilled approximately one centimeter beyond the posterior longitudinal ligament into the, uh, in, into the dorsal aspect. So, and, uh, 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 in, in, uh, I was telling in, in, into the in, 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 into the dorsal aspect of the quadral vertebra, and then medially ventral to the dura, and then rostrally through the disc space and into the upper vertebral and plate, and creating a wide ventral to the disc pathology. So. I want to tell you here okay, that um, and, uh, such as for this, uh, I want to show you here picture, uh, which will uh, definitely you like it. I think you can appreciate here, there is a, uh, you can see the cavity with the hypodense area, severely hypodense area, the bone almost gone because of the osteotomy. So you can make, make that kind of the osteotomy, but you can see there the de decent uh, stability is still there. And we and, and you can fix posteriorly with the with the uh, uh, with the other pedicle or or or, or the Bab Morley of the previous days, uh, titanium of course definitely, and um, you can make uh, this Bab Morley with the help of the with the help of the uh, I must say there the transpedicular same is true, you can put in the directly into the body and just give a support. Definitely the major support from the bone, but if this uh, internal fixation give a decent support for the patient here. Uh, actually, the CT imaging is an integral for the pre-operative imaging and failure to adequate access to the location and consistency of the thoracic disc herniation may lead to selection of the inappropriate surgical approach Accurate localization prior to the incision is crucial to verify the correct operative level in the thoracic spine and should be performed using the same method as was performed preoperatively and after initial dissection, the level should again be more verified and prior to any bony removal. <sighs> Here I want to show you one more thing and I, uh, I, uh, and I hope you will like it uh, that uh, in, in, in the axial how uh, it looks. So in the axial you can appreciate how it looks as I mentioned you in the sagittal plane the CT and you can appreciate the two screws are going through and uh, these two screws will trans particularly uh, particularly uh, um, and uh, giving the impression that it is uh, 
going into the body and you can fix this and this instability issue has been solved properly and adequately. So as you are appreciating this thing, I want to show you one more thing here. But before that, and, uh, uh, the, 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 while drilling the pedicle, care should be taken to identify it is the medial edge to avoid the incidental breach and durotomy because there, the, it, uh, treating the durotomy is not easy as uh, in the du uh, in the lumbar area. But here I want to. Here I want to show you, you uh, definitely you are appreciating the T7, T8 and the T9 and you can appreciate here how the, uh, 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 the approach and uh, can be made if there is a disc there then how we are approaching to the disc with the curate and the, with the help of the and how we are putting the particle screws and you can appreciate there is the, the particle and, uh, and uh, a screw how you are uh, these are the markers and the trans approach back down curate is used to the uh, pursue the disc uh, material uh, ventrally so these are the very important uh, and uh, reminding pictures in your mind definitely while drilling the pedicle I, 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 as i mentioned you okay, you have avoid the durotomy and prior to the manipulating the trash, uh, sorry, thoracic disc herniation it is critical to create a large enough ventral cavity to accept the disc material and the extreme caution must be must be used when pursuing the disc material into the cavity to avoid uh, an, uh, rocking the curate into the cord and um, early removal of the lamina may lead to the posterior stretching and the translation of the cord and manifesting as the neurophysiological signal loss and uh, injury and it is therefore recommended that the ventral decompression be performed prior to the posterior decompression when feasible. And uh, perfusion of the thoracic spine is a, is a genius. Uh, 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 perfusion of the thoracic spine in the tenius and uh, anesthetic vigilance is required to maintain elevated mean arterial pressure and uh, maximize volume status. Appropriate selection of the anesthetic agent is uh, important and the propofol uh, and uh, comprise blood flow to the cord and the, uh, and the ketamine is often uh, often utilized to the optimum uh, optimum perfusion. I want to tell you one thoracic discogenic syndrome is a definitely a topic related to our topic currently. Definitely, I told you that as a neurosurgeon that there is a thoracic disc herniation, but the thoracic discogenic syndrome is definitely we have to understand. You know the symptomatic thoracic discogenic pain syndrome is a rare phenomenon making it challenging to diagnose the reality of the thoracic disc uh, uh, discogenic pain syndrome is attributed to the particular orientation structure and the function of the thoracic spine in the vertebral column and the thoracic spine and the sacrum uh, exhibit kyphosis which is present at birth while the cervical and the lumbar spine exhibit fully exposed lordosis uh, around puberty the, lo the lordotic nature of the cervical and the lumbar spine allows the imaginary line of the gravity to run though although them to bear most of the weight of the axial skeleton as compared to the thoracic and the sacral spine. Consequently, they are subject to a higher percentage of the degenerated disc and subsequent discogenic pain syndrome. Between each vertebral body lies the intervertebral disc. The intervertebral disc is composed of the two material, the, the outer hard fibrous ring called the annulus fibrosis and the inner soft gelatinous core called the nucleus pulposus. The intervertebral disc function to both absorb shock and allow flexibility of the uh, vertebral column as the body uh, as the body ages and the integrity of the intervertebral disc decline and cause the inner core of the disc to produce through, to, to produce through the outer layer and the effect of these will be either compression of the nerve root or the spinal cord and give rise to the radicular or the myelopathic uh, symptoms. 
the majority of the thoracic disc herniation is asymptomatic or the patient present with the non-specific symptom like the chest wall pain, epigastric pain, upper extremity pain, sometime pain in the groin and the lower extremity or an lower extremity causing the clinician to think of a more common problem that a thoracic disc herniation. So while the rare nature and coupled with the atypical presentation may lead to delay in diagnosis and it has been significantly and, uh, cited in the in the literature that the uh, um, MRI can be a very useful in diagnosing thoracic disc herniation. The majority of asymptomatic thoracic disc herniation were often diagnosed due to the incidental MRI finding and treatment of the thoracic discogenic pain syndrome is conservative but, but sometimes surgical uh, uh, intervention with surgical intervention associated with the many complications and, uh, uh, and th th these are the facts regarding the thoracic disc herniation. Intervertebral disc degeneration primarily cause thoracic discogenic pain syndrome. The exact cause of the disc degeneration is believed to be multifactorial and the factors that cause the disc degeneration include the trauma, metabolic abnormalities, genetic predisposition, and a, a vascular problem and infection. Among these factors, trauma happens to be one of the most common cause of the thoracic disc herniation and the effect of the trauma as previously, as previously mentioned are less devastating on the thoracic spine as compared to the cervical and the lumbar spine because of the thoracic spine participate in less weight bearing, uh, less weight bear, uh, bearing activities and the ribcage and the coronal orientation of the facet joint make it more stable, hence the less prone to the degenerative disc disease. With trauma, chronic overload from the lifting of the heavy object or the chronic multi-trauma from individual participating in the sports lead to the repeated rotation of the axial spine and causing vertebral instability with alteration of the spine alignment that accelerate the risk of developing disc degeneration. As mentioned above, thoracic disc herniation is a rare and usually asymptomatic and it is found incidental with the MRI herniation of the intervertebral disc in the thoracic region and make up only 0.5% to 4.5% all disc rupture. Uh, 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 I am sorry. And I beg your pardon, about 80% of the patient usually present with the problem in the third or the fourth decade of the life and about 75% incidence occur below the T8 with the peak around the T11 to T12 and about 63 are asymptomatic and have an incidence of 1 in 1 million. Regarding the pathophysiology, uh, I want to tell you in detail little more. I already told you in, in detail little more, but I want to repeat it. By that manner, the thoracic discogenic syndrome may be radicular or myelopathic and the radicular pain is mostly secondary to the posterior lateral herniation that compress spinal nerve as they exit through the intervertebral foramen. Radicular pain will usually radiate through the dermatome of the nerve root innervated by the exiting nerve and the myelopathic pain on the other end is seen in the central herniation. In this case, in this case, the herniated disc compresses the spinal cord and leading to uh, 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 and the leading to, uh, leading to the sensory and the motor problem uh, in the uh, in the corresponding compressed area and below and this is particularly more severe in the thoracic spinal cord since the spinal canal in this region is smaller compared to the cervical canal and the lumbar region. Hence, a slight compression will lead to symptom and the majority of the thoracic disc herniation goes through the calcification process. While this calcification also causes symptoms in some cases, an adherence of this calcified herniated disc to the dura may erode it. So, leading to the cerebrospinal fluid leak and the patient presenting with the atypical symptom like a headache, orthostatic hypertension, intracranial hypertension, critical condition that requires the immediate medical attention. Little 
I will tell you about the history and the physical. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the majority of the thoracic disc herniation is asymptomatic and discovered incidentally with an MRI, unlikely the lumbar and the cervical spine herniation. Thoracic disc herniation have atypical symptom and then uh, an often a diagnosis of the exclusion. To accurate di accurately diagnose thoracic and discogenic pain syndrome, a thorough history and the physical examination should be done as part of the patient's uh, pain evaluation, assessment of the uh, quality, intensity, distribution, uh, alleviating and the uh, aggravating factor is essential. Patient with the thoracic disc herniation may either present with the radicular and the myelopathic pain depending on if the herniated disc compress the nerve root of the spinal cord itself respectively. With radicular pain, the patient will have pain that follows the dermatomal distribution, essential landmark for the thoracic disc herniation to help with assessment include the T1 pain that radiate to the medial forearm, the T2 pain that radiate to the axilla, T4 pain that radiate to the nipple area and the T10 pain that radiate to the umbilical area. So I want to repeat because these are the very very important uh, uh, dermatomal detail regarding the involvement of the nerve level of the thoracic disc herniation here, the essential landmark for the thoracic disc herniation to help with the radiate to the nipple area, T10, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, especially I want to uh, assessment for the T1 pain that radiate to the medial forearm. Medial forearm, if it is coming in the medial forearm, T1 level. Everybody knows that, but I just want to mention T2 pain that radiate to the axilla. If the axilla is involved, then the T2. If there is a nipple, a, a, a nipple area, this is the T4 area. And if there is a umbilicus being radiating to the umbilicus, then this is a T10 area. And and a T12 pain that above the inguinal ligament and the most commonly initial pain is usually thoracic pain occurring in the midline area and the pain may be unilateral and the bilateral depending upon the location and how significant the, the herniation is, the pain may be intermittent and aggravated by the cuffing and straining. There have been reported cases of the pain radiating to the groin, flank and even the lower extremities. It is always important to assess the other condition that may be causing the radicular pain. For example, patient with the uh, with the disease like the diabetes and the shingles may have the similar thoracic uh, uh, dermatomal pain, but this is the case. There may be the metabolic abnormality to to prove the diabetes and uh, and the and the skin rash to point the shingle. It is also essential. It is also essential to rule out the other mechanical causes that may lead to the similar syndrome. For example, oblique muscle pain, rib fracture, fracture of the facet joint and the clavicle fracture or the pain regarding the clavicle. Uh, detailed patient history is needed to elicit the ori origin of the pain and the correlate pain with the patient lifestyle. For example, while athletes like the baseball and the golf player are most likely to have a thoracic discogenic pain syndrome and they are also more prone to having pain from the oblique, oblique muscle, cervical or the facet joint. Other conditions like patient with the malignant uh, uh, like the patient with the malignancies like neurofibroma may also present with the thoracic pain syndrome and assessing skin for the cafulatis spot and the other neurofibroma that are associated with this condition is vital for the diagnosis. On the other hand, the patient with the myelopathic pain may present with the pain corresponding to the spinal cord region and, and compressed and the lower the patient may present with the lower extremity numbness and the weakness, pain, gait, abnormality, hyperreflexia and in rare cases paraplegia. Intracranial and the postural hypotension and the headaches are the exceptional and emergency presentation with the thoracic pain may be secondary to, cal uh, to calcified disc uh, tearing the dura leading to the cerebral spinal fluid. Physical examination should include 
assessment of the sensation with pinprick and touch in the upper extremity at the thoracic and the abdominal abdomen in the dermo, in, in the dermatomal region mentioned above the check for the radiculopathy and also in the lower extremities to check for the myelopathy also for the lower extremities and proprioception and the reflexes and tone should be evaluated for regarding the evaluation, as I mentioned about the MRI of the thoracic spine, the very sensitive and the specific for diagnosing thoracic disc herniation. In some situations, thoracic disc can be performed to confirm the pain being of the discogenic origin and being the most thoracic discogenic syndrome can be asymptomatic. Treatment and uh, regarding the treatment and the management, uh, the initial treatment of the thoracic uh, discogenic syndrome is usually conservative non uh, peritoneal since some disc herniation have been reported to stabilize regress with the time especially in the younger patient and conservative patient conservative uh, management include uh, rest intra anti inflammatory drugs physical therapy drug like uh, parapregabalin have been reported to be useful for the numbness and the radicular pain and the selective spinal root for the intercostal nerve blockage and the epidural steroidal injection can also be used to treat radicular pain. Surgical intervention is considered as a last resort for the treatment of the symptomatic thoracic disc herniation with patient unresponsive to the conservative treatment. Surgery will uh, allow for the removal of the ossified disc decompression in the region and the relieving pressure on the nerve or the spinal cord. Despite advance in the thoracic disc herniation surgery, there are still about 20 to 30 percent complications associated with it. Several factors contribute to these complications. First, symptomatic thoracic disc herniation is rare, making it difficult for the doctor to gain enough experience to handle it. Secondly, the nature of the thoracic spine makes it difficult to assist the herniation for example assessing the herniation that are located centrally and anteriorly why the posterior vertebral column will remain manipulating the thoracic spine that may result in further spinal cord injury and the neurological deficit assessing centrally located herniation uh, through the anterior transthoracic approach provide, provide an the optimal corridor but it is also involved high complication and morbidity thirdly herniation that are calcified and adherent to the dura risk dural tear using surgery and leading to the CSF leak and the intracranial and orthostatic hypotension and headache. Differential diagnosis, I must want to tell you like that the cervical injury, cervical radiculopathy, lumbosacral radiculopathy, lumbosacral disc injury, lumbosacral discogenic pain syndrome, lumbo, uh, lumbosacral spondylosis, and uh, the thoracic disc uh, thoracic discogenic pain syndrome is a rare uh, is a rare making it challenging for the healthcare team to diagnose and treat the condition and uh, here 